श्रुति स्मृतिपुराणा आलय करुणाल नमा भगवत्द शोकशंक शंकर शंकराचार्यम केशव बादरायण सूत्रभाष्यकृत वंदे भगव गुरुरात्मेतिभेद विभागिने व्याप्तदेहाय दक्षिणामूर्त नम सदा शिव सरंभा शंकराचार्यम अस्मदाचार्यपर्यता वंदे गुरुपरंपरा ओ सहना सह नौ भुन सह वीर तेजस्वी नवधीतमस्तु मिद्वेशई ओ शाति 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 वासुदेवेन्द्रयोगींद्र न्वान प्रदम गुरु मुमुक्षुणिता तत्वबोधो विधीयते so last class we were looking at the swami ji's questions about atma atma kah sachidananda swarupah atma and then uh, elaborating on that further further sat kim <coughs> सत् किम त्रिकाले तिष्ठति दैट विच स्टेस इन ऑल थ्री पीरियड्स ऑफ टाइम से सो इट्स अमेजिंग दैट इज इनफ टू डिफाइन सत् एंड देन चित किम ज्ञान स्वरूप चित सो दैट सो दिस कॉन्शियस्नेस because i know everything this consciousness helps me know everything and so they have said consciousness jnana swarupa chit jnana swarupa and of course atma is sadrupa and atma is chit rupa and one more thing has to be covered ananda so that is the next question i think that is where we stopped so go ahead uh, one of you can unmute yourself uh, mahesh ji <coughs> okay i have unmuted mahesh <coughs> so we are uh, this question number is uh, Forty-seven, forty-eight. Yeah, forty-seven, fifty. Fifty-four. So it must be fifty-five, I think. Fifty-five, yes. Okay. Ananda kaha. Ananda kaha. Sukhaswarupa ha. Sukhaswarupa ha. 
evam evam satchidananda swarupam satchidananda swarupam atmanam atmanam vijaniyat vijaniyat okay so i'll unmute so go ahead hem uh, and moini uh, ji unmute yourself just for my own benefit okay <clears throat> so we talked about ananda earlier also so we have an idea that ananda was not to be found in any place not to be found at any particular time we talked about when there is an experience of happiness there is a subject object division that is what we said there is a division between subject object or experiencer experienced object which combine to create an experience so i am about to have a rasagulla <coughs> so assume that you like rasagulla otherwise replace the word rasagulla by that which you like most so when i was young i used to like uh, there is a like this like milk kova is there they make a dish in the southern part of india called tarti pal so it used to be our favorite and uh, many many people consider that to be a delicacy so delicacy is there that is the key example here so you take a rasagulla <coughs> and and already the sight of the rasagulla was enough the expectation is there that oh, this is just what i love right now so then the moment the rasagulla is placed in the tongue an object that you like and then this experience of ecstasy at that point until then i am going to eat the rasagulla rasagulla is there i am there and i am going to eat it the moment the rasagulla is experienced at that point there is no more eater and eaten mm. during that experience during that experience this eater eaten division is not there it's not there it disappears completely subject object experience disappears completely then after some time you're back you're back to the reality and i want more of it this experience is not enough wouldn't it be nice to have a little more yeah sure there is some more a piece of rasagulla remaining a big piece is remaining so why don't i help myself and it goes on like this for some time and if you are lucky and if you don't have diabetes and all these things you can help yourself for a couple of more rasagullas and continue this experience for a little longer and other people will only sit and watch you so that experience is over for them so this experience during this experience or just after this experience if somebody were to ask you what do you want the answer will most likely be i don't want anything i am full i am complete this is how this is where the word purnaha comes purnaha i am full i am i have everything i want for now at least within brackets for now but 
that within brackets <laughs> it doesn't come to us at that point. So great was that experience. So this Ananda. We call it an experience, but during that experience, because of the negation of the subject object, the division, the division of me and the other completely gone. And that is basically the time we are able to see, as it were, the nature of Atma this ananda and it, we mistake it as though rasagulla is giving me this ananda rasagulla is a nimitta we call it nimitta nimitta means it is just a, a by the way it is just there but the real ananda really is already there and it just gives me a window of opportunity to recognize that atma so that is why this Anandaha is often called as Purnaha, wholeness or fullness, these words are used. Limitlessness, that's the key. Limitlessness. Anandaha, that is why we said Ananda should be looked at as Anandaha, first and foremost. Anandaha. So if you look at children, you can see that very well. They are not burdened by any biases, any issues, nothing. And especially this two-year-old, somebody said, my son is now, your son must be a year. I said, no, he's two years old. And just running around and the whole world is his. Correct? Terrible to and all they say. Terrible to why? Because there is this child, nothing stops the child. The child doesn't see any subject object division, and the whole world is there. And I don't see any difference between me and the world, and everything belongs to me, and I also belong to the world. The child is ignorant, doesn't know any Vedanta, no doubt. But it says no divisions. This, even this, uh, my family, their family, even those divisions only start to appear now. Mm. But until then, even that division is not there. If it has that division, it means it has come from the parents. Looking at the parents, it realizes, oh, this is my family. I cannot step out of this house. Oh, somebody, there is fear. Something, fear, some fear has been created when I step out of the house. All these are projections given to the child. No, no, don't touch this. Don't touch that. Don't eat this. Don't eat that. So, okay, there is a reason for all that. But, but until then, the child has no division whatsoever. When I attend this Kato Upanishad class, on the way, there is a, there is a family. They bring their son out. Son is just uh, some six months old, eight months old. Just beginning to sit. And this Surya Deva, they have named him Surya Deva. And this boy is so amazing. He goes to anybody who is ready to take. You ask him to come, let's go. He just comes to you. So he smiles and then he just comes to you. And then somebody else comes, he smiles, he just goes to them. It's, it's amazing. It feels this, this boy is something very, very different. No agitation, just completely calm, a soft smile and then goes to the other person. And I'm taking him all the way away and then say, Tata, and we are going, we are watching all these cows and all that and there is a peacock and he's just watching and he's just going along with me. Then he comes back and the grandmother says, come on, let's go. And then he says, he looks the other way. Looks the other way. He says, that means I don't want, no, don't, I don't want to come. <laughs> so, these children, we can see this anantatvam, we can see this division, subject of object division, really not there. 
So opposite of that is what? Dukkham. Dukkham is sorrow. Sorrow means opposite of limitlessness, limitation. Limitation, correct? So I don't have this, I don't have that, I want this, I want that. The minute I I say I want this, I am implying that I am incomplete without that object. I want a new sofa, I want a new bed, It'd be nice to have a new clock. So if that want becomes binding, then this dukkham sets in. Some form of dukkham. Mm -hmm. Because the division is there now. I have limited myself. This is the way the Shastra wants us to think. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Very amazing. So, I have come to rely on this momentary fusion of subject and object for my Ananda. So, I look for experiences. I don't say, oh, I'm about to fuse subject and object right now. No, we don't say all that. But that is what happens when I seek all these experiences. Okay. And so this is where Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavan Sri Krishna, second chapter, this Tita Pragna Lakshanam comes. Arjuna asks, you know, tell me more about this Tita Pragna. The one who knows this truth, tell me about that person. And Arjuna uses this word Tita Pragna, my God, and Krishna loves it. Because Krishna doesn't change it at all. He keeps on repeating that Sita Pragna, Sita Pragna. And that shows Arjuna's understanding. Arjuna has a very good understanding also. Despite his lack of clarity, he also understands very well. Sita Pragna, what a fantastic word. Pragna, one who knows. Sita Pragna, one who knows very well. Nothing more to know. And that knowledge cannot disappear also. That person, Sthita Pragya. So he says, Tell me who is a Sthita Pragya? The first answer Krishna gives is what? Prajahati Yada Kaman. Correct? Prajahati Yada Kaman. E Partha. O Partha, O Arjuna. Yada Sarvan Kaman Prajahati. When one, literal translation is one, one gives up all. All objects of desire, that is what it means. Sarvan, Sarvan Kaman Yada Prajahati Manogatan. Manogatan means as they arise in the mind, they are given up. Means what? Means it doesn't mean they should not arise. It means as they arise, the person knows that. The desire is there, but whether the desire is fulfilled or not, I am okay. That is the prajahati, that is the meaning there. Swamiji talks very well about it. Atmanyeva atmana tushtaha sthita pragnya stadochyate. Atmanyeva atmana tushtaha. Very interesting. That person is tushtaha. Tushta means contented. Nothing more to be contented about. How he is happy. Atmana Tushtaha. Swayameva Tushtaha. Without engaging in anything, that person is contented. And where is he contented? Atmani Eva. In oneself alone. In one, oneself, by oneself, the person is tushtaha. Like that, it goes. Sita pragnya stadochyate. Such a person is called sita pragnya. And such a such a disposition can only happen when that knowledge is there, which Krishna had talked about before all of this. Because the, the discussion was over. 
and then arjuna asks this question he want to know more so what will happen if that is the implication of the question is what will happen to me if i gain this knowledge that is the question <clears throat> okay now this ananda this word what is bliss they talk about bliss in many translations sat existence chit consciousness ananda bliss now if you use the word bliss for ananda you said this before cognitively limitless right subject object division goes away means what limitless there is no limitation i am not separate from anything i am not isolated there is no sense of isolation everything is brahma there is no question of isolation any any distinction can only be mithya correct we saw that can only be mithya wave is there you say there are so many waves the wave itself may not say there are so many waves i say there are so many waves so i have divided the ocean into so many objects but really are there so many objects if you ask it is questionable something to think about i am projecting a particular shape particular form and i say this is a small wave this is a large wave <coughs> that is a tsunami wave all this forms important for us to recognize no doubt but the reality is that everything is just water so that reality we are learning to appreciate here and so when the word bliss is used the ananta which we are supposed to appreciate has been converted into an experience and experience is very subjective experience therefore cannot be a defining word understand this very well atma is the shastram is trying to define atma trying to define atma and the definition the experience cannot be used to define a word that's what shastram is saying because now if you put it in terms of experience then i can only go by all the experiences i had all the happy experiences and sad experiences yes and therefore now i am seeking i will start seeking an experience experience can never be final no experience is permanent remember this because by nature what is experience something that begins and something that ends that is what we call an experience then you have to say i had a blissful experience i must say that means what there was an experience it was a very happy experience and i liked it and it came to an end also because that is why i said i had an experience so this we have to be very careful when we use the word bliss and traditional scholars will never use the word bliss there is no place for bliss this limitlessness is manifest as a sukha sukhanubhava sukhanubhava as an individual when you ask me what was that experience i will have to say it was a it was a great experience pleasant experience whatever we can say but it can't be a defining word please remember that so our shastram is trying to define and of course it uses the word ananda <clears throat> so another problem with using this word bliss is ignorance is bliss this is another thing we have so if i say this is bliss what is the implication you tell me i'd rather be ignorant of this atma mm. only then i can have this blissful experience Hey, we are talking about jnana, which is the opposite of ajnana, ignorance. And uh, 
ignorance is bliss. So why don't we be ignorant? ये जान के क्या फायदा है? Already we have been conditioned to think like this. So we don't need to bring this word bliss. And Swamiji is very careful when he talks and he makes it a point. This bliss, we need to get away from this bliss idea. Okay. So, having said that, we discussed about ananda, ananta, lim limitlessness. Sukha Swarupaha, here he says, the nature, so he says, ananta is of the nature of Sukha. Means personally, you will, there is uh, an experience of ananda, or it is cognitively ananta. When you see this truth, it will you will see the limitlessness of it. Like space. Like you cognitively see the limitlessness of space. Okay. So now, then he says, evam satchidananda swarupam atmanam vijaniya. So maybe I should give uh, translations, right? So, where did we stop? Um, okay. So, Sat Kim, what is Sat or existence? That is the way we translate it. Sat Kim, which is 151. What is Sat, comma, existence? The answer to which is, that which stays in all three periods of time, past, present, and future within brackets, is Sat. The next question is uh, Chit Kim. What is Chit? We can carefully say, what is consciousness? And we can say it because consciousness we saw before cannot be objectified. You can appreciate it, but you can't say that is consciousness or this is consciousness. You can't point your finger to it. So we are safe, safe by using the word consciousness. It gives you, an, gives you an idea and we are beginning to appreciate it. That through which I am conscious of the entire world. And we are beginning to learn that it is all pervasive, etc. So, Chit Kim, what is Chit, comma, consciousness? Jnana Swarupaha. The Swarupa of knowledge or comprehension or cognition. These three words can be safely used. The Swarupa. Now, the question is what is Swarupa? Very technical word, very important word in our Shastra. Swarupa means, I'll give you an example. What is the Swarupa of the whale? If you ask, if somebody asks, you will immediately say, the Swarupa of the whale is water. Swarupa of the whale. The actual nature of wave, the actual content of wave is water. Wave is mithya, but I want to know what is the reality of the wave. What is the swarupa of the wave? There is a meaning of swarupa, very beautiful word. And so, here the swarupa of knowledge means the, the nature of knowledge, the true nature of knowledge, like that we can translate into English. And here in my notes, I have not translated it at all. I left it as the Swarupa of knowledge. Because once I understand Swarupa, I don't need to translate it anymore. Okay, so that is Chit. Then we have Anandakaha. What is Anandaha? Sukha Swarupaha. It is, literally you can translate it as, it is of the nature of happiness. Or, it is of the nature of limitlessness. What is the way to 
understand sukha swarupa so experientially it is of the nature of happiness cognitively it is of the nature of limitlessness that is the way we can say it okay so evam sachidananda swarupam atmanam vijaniyat so is concluded he says vijaniyat vijaniyat means what may you know may you know so in sanskrit there is something called there is a particular uh, just like present tense past tense future tense etc there is uh, another type of tense or mood they call it it's called vidhi linga vidhi linga and this word is a vidhi vidhi means vidhi means uh, it's actually a command it's actually a command janiyat you must know may you know that is the, the command being given here you don't have an option may you know it this way that is what uh, swami ji is saying okay may you know what atma nam may you know atma this way evam means this way sachidananda swarupam may you know atma as of the nature of sachidananda swarupa in this way that i describe that is a literal translation of this <coughs> so atma stands defined by this sachidananda sat chittan ananda and now a question can arise the student says so i am sachidananda yes you are sachidananda and i am also limitless yes you are limitless so there is nothing besides me yes there is nothing besides you you are the only one in this world in fact this world means you only then uh, then am i am i the maker of this world yeah you are the maker of this world also uh what about you am i the maker of you also yes you are the maker of me also but so why am i listening to you why am i student and why am teacher why are you teacher i am student and all this guru and shishya and all what is all this going on this is the question student is asking the teacher seems to be stuck if notice quietly the definition of i has changed during this dialogue correct yeah. <laughs> <laughs> quietly changed i am the whole yes atma is the whole fine chit is the whole fine and i am the student means what <laughs> reference to this body this mind this uh, this uh, senses which is manifest in this body all that that i is a shishya that is so that definition quietly the i has changed along this along the way so therefore <clears throat> this i am consciousness is a very popular idea it's not new you know you don't you know this you don't one doesn't have to study lot of vedanta to understand this i am consciousness lot of paper bags have it and many new age teachers also talk about i am consciousness your consciousness etc they say 
so if you stop with that this is where the problem the, this kind of problem will arise because it still leaves a lot to be understood nam consciousness is good it's a good but it's only a starting point this whole jagat that i am confronting has to be analyzed has to be understood has to be explained only then vedanta is complete otherwise this i am consciousness is a half baked idea people run around saying i am consciousness you are consciousness so here is a person a jeeva confronting this world and i look around and i see this vast world as far as the eyes can see it goes on and on and the stars are there and the sun is there the moon is there and all these things around the world is there it's so fascinating it's so vast and i am only a small speck in this universe very obvious i'm trying to make sense i'm trying to eke out a living in this world and i'm going through all these experiences on top of that and this if you look at all this what we see is the tree is given this house is given this flowers are given the the city is given to me the moon is given to me the sun is given the the vegetables are given the fruits are given everything given just coming and given i don't i have no role to play in any of these things okay i use the word house okay maybe some day i constructed this house i decided i needed a house and so i constructed it i say but all these materials are given even this body is given to me the name at least i must have some choice to decide what my name is even that authority i don't have and suddenly people are calling me by a name and then i pick up the name and later on somebody ask me what is your name i say my name is this and that my name is this is not my own somebody told me that my name is this see how sad it is that means what <laughs> how what a joke it is <laughs> so this body is given this color of my skin is given the color of my hair is given whether i have hair or not also is given i'm trying hard to get grow hair and it's not growing and the color of the hair is not the way i want it so like this everything seems to be given and i am sitting here and i find that there is really, there is really very little that i can say <clears throat> that i created or this is me or this is my own very very hard to come up with those things so this entire arrangement is given this jagat we call it jagat in sanskrit <clears throat> so and in 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 english when they say universe sometimes they use the word cosmos and i think they use the word cosmology as the study of this universe which is what now we are entering vedanta is entering into this study of this jagat finally it's going to talk about the mahavakyam tat tvam asi correct tat tvam asi <clears throat> so far we've been talking about tvam 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 means you means when the shastra is addressing me as you so it refers to me the jiva to and there is asi asi means in sanskrit uh, you are that are is asi and that 
amazing that the word that should be like tat of sanskrit i'm still amazed by it i somebody has to research this and find out if this is some kind of a copy paste situation so tat is that we have already talked about this examples where if i show you an object i was giving this example to the children college children the other day college students that i told them please come to kaimatur i want to show you something very unique you see you can see mountains right from the house and towering and uh, you feel like just hugging those mountains but no that's not why i am inviting you to kaimatur i will take you to these mountains and there is a particular place where these watches are there i think i told you this example I don't mind repeating it so these watches are coming from the from the earth just coming out like a spring like water and not just that hey all ladies you go there because that's where ladies watches are coming and you boys you go there and that is where all these gents watches are coming and just pick one watch this one is enough why what will you do with five watches you just pick one okay you say i have my brother at home okay pick two watches and just come back because i tell you this will you believe me they said uh, mm, they said doctor on they said no uncle we can't believe i said why why can't you believe me all these months and years you've been believing me wasting one hour every friday you've been believing me why don't you believe me no 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 we can't believe it yeah tell me why you don't believe no this is uh, the watch is a very sophisticated piece of equipment and uh, there must be somebody who makes it and uh, consciously it's put together all this they were saying so not very clearly because sudden nobody asked a question like this and so these people are all studying architecture and ayurveda and medicine and all that suddenly you ask a question like this it's like is confusing don't ask me this kind of question ask me what is the content of ribo rna ribo nucleic acid and i can tell you what it is and don't give me this kind of an example so the, <laughs> so i told them hey this is a very sophisticated thing and you need you can't somebody has to make it some human being has to make it then i say i'll ask you something is your body sophisticated or not is the tree sophisticated or not can you make what the tree makes can any machine in this world make what the tree makes no that means if you say a machine is sophisticated then what about the tree it is more sophisticated than the sophisticated machine and but you see the tree in front of you <clears throat> and you say you you just take the tree for granted it's just coming from the earth and i tell you uh, you please come to kaimatur we will see i will show you some trees they are just coming and they are growing you will say hey come on mysore also has all that <laughs> you tell me sir, tell us something interesting uncle so i am telling you something interesting watches are there come do you want to watch or not yeah you might say these days i don't wear watches it's all cell phone nobody wears watches anymore i'm not interested okay i can accept that but you're not fascinated by this so very important to think about this because we can't accept that watches are coming why because there is so much sophistication in a watch deliberately put together an analog watches especially these days they don't make because those days it required so much precision and it required a human being to put together and so much painstaking work is there 
and these days the electronic watch i suppose they just probably if we visited a casio company or something it just comes like this you know so many watches a second i probably they make <clears throat> but the watchmaker amazing how he would make a an analog watch so i took a watch i took my my analog there is a analog watch i have which i bought in 1980 or 1991 and it is still working i can't believe it and that fellow looks at it and says my god you still have this it's working yes sir these seco watches they work they work for a long time this and it was it was having some problem so he actually cleaned it up and so it's still running because 91 is too long too long ago so here's the idea is this question of who created has to come has to come a thinking person will ask the question who created this world has to come and then the answer comes answer comes upar wala upar wala kadavul bhagavan devudu ishwar like this answers come and you ask him okay where is this ishwar ye kya baat hai upar hai wo upar are upar hai means what why not niche why not niche nobody says niche bhagwan niche hai nobody says that here yeah, whatever why niche not that's because oh, you are standing on this earth you can't be standing on bhagwan so ambani constructs this big building and uh, his house it seems in mumbai is so big so actually 2 3 th- months back i actually went to youtube and i actually looked it up i wanted to see this 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 they talk about this guys building and i saw a nice video which went through all the floors of this guys building and uh, there is no end and so ambani you ask you ask him where is your floor anil anil ji where is your floor is he going to say ground floor mein hai or is he going to say top floor mein hai this psychology is this guy's floor is on the top and uh, th- th- this is so amazing the guy constructs this whole building and his floor are if it is a ground floor you can reach quickly correct you can save time because ambani must be a busy man and so many people entourage is coming with him and every second is money for him so at least go reach your floor quickly no this floor floor is right on top it takes so many seconds maybe a minute to go up on top and uh, why top top only top only i think fascinates us you now from there he can see the whole mumbai he can see all planes taking off everything he can see and he doesn't need curtains for these windows because curtain rakhe kya prayojan hai there is no use curtain is required for privacy upar mein kya privacy it's all private only only god is watching at best and god doesn't is unaffected god is great guy he is unaffected he is neither attracted by you he is neither repelled by you he doesn't tell anybody about you all this atte so privacy not needed no curtains needed so top floor penthouse so this upar wala very interesting upar wala all religions stop with this they say upar wala and then the religion stops over why upar why ishwar waha hai why he is not here what about earth he is not here no come on come on please don't joke like this how can god be here on this earth we have seen each other we have seen so many people we have even traveled some of us have traveled so many places we have seen so many places we don't find anybody who is capable of creating this world that is a very very obvious conclusion we don't need big phd's to figure this out i want to do a phd to figure out if god is in on earth or not so this kind of topic we don't hear we don't hear the upar wala concluded 
एवरी न्यू रिलीजन स्टॉप्स विद दिस ऊपर वाला एंड एंड देन दिस देन दे क्रिएट अ डिजायर टू गो एंड बी विद दिस ऊपर वाला बिकॉज हेवन बिकॉज हेवन मस्ट बी अ ग्रेट प्लेस वाई इट मस्ट बी अ ग्रेट प्लेस अनदर कंक्लूजन इज मेड गॉड के नॉट क्रिएट दिस 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 यू नो all mosquitoes around him and sweating all day no electricity potholes the minute you step out you just fall down because there is a new pothole so <laughs> this happens it happens there all everybody especially here senior citizen homes and they're all careful you know walking and they don't step out of this compound because right outside there are potholes so god cannot create a place like that it has to be a great place and of course he cannot prevent us from coming so if not this life maybe after death he will go there and now the desire is created in me that i must go to heaven after death and you keep on repeating it repeating it repeating it and write a book and distribute the book to people and then it becomes canon it becomes bible it becomes it becomes the spoken word and nobody can change it and there is a big line waiting also this is how religions are created i mean it's so easy <laughs> it's uh, actually it is so easy because <laughs> if you know a little bit and if you know how to talk and if you modulate your voice enough my goodness people there are millions of people waiting to follow you and uh, this is how religions are created and then on top of that you say if you don't follow what i say you will go to hell that also by the way that that footnote must be there remember then only people will follow otherwise they will start thinking and say oh this fellow <laughs> uh, yeah you don't allow the fellow to think and the way you don't allow a person to think is to project fear on them mm. you say if you don't do this you will something big drastic is going to happen to you then this insecurity is there and it stops us from thinking that's what that's what the church did so many uh, this one centuries ago and uh, i was amazed index of pro- prohibited books some of you may have known we look up google index of prohibited books there was a religion which prohibited gave a big list of books which you should not study and you look up some of the best books are there in that list it's just mind boggling so stop a person from thinking this is what happens hey it's okay you say god heaven fine nothing wrong with that you can neither prove it nor disprove it that also i am okay with but why bring this word into the picture why bring fear into the picture this is where the problem lies anyway so the satpada inquiry comes even the average person asks the same question remember that is the beauty of this how did this creation come about you look at the star and you, there are more stars and there are more stars and they say there are countless stars and uh, it is just so mind boggling how do you know there is no planet out there where there are no other living beings how can you say you can't say you can't say earth is the only planet where there are living beings you can't say that just like earth there could be millions of planets out there we don't know that is why i heard this one statement The, the surest evidence that there is intelligent life out there is because they have not tried to reach us. <laughs> no, we are all sending rockets and all these things, I suppose satellites and all that, We're sending all these objects to find out. So they say intelligent life is there because they have not found us yet. Yeah, they are not bothered. They said that is true intelligence. okay so tat and tvam are the two words and the shastram is not simply saying upar wala and then dropping it off 
and it's going and saying tat tvamasi on top of all this. And I, this minuscule fellow who is looking at this world and is so amazed and uh, is saying, no, you are that. That means what? The abheda between tat and tvam, abheda means the, the non-difference between tvam and tat. Tat, let's say, is Ishvara for now. The immediate meaning is Ishvara. The Abheda is very clear. I am not God, of course. I didn't create anything. And even the things I create, I am not in control of them. My children, if I say I created them, I am not in control of them also. So they seem to be uncontrollable. Where is the question of me being God? So this God is so vast and big and all-pervasive and powerful and all-knowledgeable. And I am not that. That Bheda is very, very crystal clear. So we don't need a big scripture to come and tell me this. Correct? A big text with so many pages is not needed to tell me that there is a God and you are this. And scripture is not needed. Even before the scripture, I figured it out. I have enough intelligence to figure out that I am small and God is big. That figured out. Now, this Abheda is there. Shastra is talking about Abheda. Means there is essential non difference between Ishvara and Jiva. Now, to talk about that only, Shastram is needed. Otherwise, Shastram is not needed. You don't need a Shastram. You are a sinner. You are, you are a sufferer. This is all life will be until after death. So this kind of thing doesn't help me at all. Because I am seeking help right here and now. What can you do to help me? This is the question I am asking. So, Shastram, our Shastram, talks about Abheda and that Abheda Vakyam is called Mahavakyam. Mahavakyam. So whenever somebody says Mahavakyam, very important word for us. A, a, a sentence, an equation that equates the Jiva and Ishvara is called a Mahavakyam. Very simple. Simple means definition is simple. And this is where we are entering now, this Tat Pada Vichara. Mm. What we are entering into is called, we are, Jiva is what? Tvam Pada Vichara. So the Jiva Vichara, the inquiry into the nature of Jiva is called Jiva Vichara. Also called Tvam Pada Vichara. Also called Vyashti Vichara. Vyashti means Microcosm. They use these words in English. I like this word. Microcosm, macrocosm. So, micro level. I am this micro level. And so, sometimes we can say that is Vyashti. Anyway, Sanskrit Vyashti Vicharaha. And now, what are we going to study? Tat Pada Vicharaha. The inquiry into the meaning of the word Tat. Tatpada vicharaha or srishti vicharaha. Srishti means loosely translated as creation. Jagad vicharaha. Creation we don't because creation is a dangerous word in the West. These days there's a lot of talk about this creationalism and creationism and all that. And for good reason there is all this dialogue going on. So we, we want to stay away from using the word creation. Jagad Vicharaha, Srishti Vicharaha, uh, Samashti Vicharaha, opposite of Vyashti is Samashti. Vyashti microcosm, Samashti macrocosm. The entire Jagat universe. That is what we are getting into right now. Okay. We'll continue. Next class. <coughs> Om Swasti Prajabhyaf Paripalayantam 
न्यायेन मार्गेण महि महिषा गोब्राह्मणेभ्य शुभमस्तु नि लोका समस्ता सुखिनो भवन्तु काले वर्षतु पर्जन्य पृथ्वी तस्य शालिनी देशो यम क्षोभ रहिता ब्राह्मण सन्त निर्भया ओम सर्वे भवन्तु सुखिनः सर्वे सन्त निरामया सर्वे भद्राणी पूर्णस्य पूर्णमादाय पूर्णमेवावशिष्य ओम शांते 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 हरि ओम श्री गुरुभ्यो नम हरि ओम